This week, I've challenged myself to spend just one dollar on every meal. Let's start with lunch. Why not? It'll be fun. I used my shopping list to plan out a week of breakfast, lunch, and dinner for approximately one dollar per meal. We are getting dry lentils for 99 cents. A bag of carrots, just 119. One yellow onion. It's probably a better value to buy a bag of onions if you can afford it. One bulb of garlic and two sweet potatoes. I had these at home already. We also need a quart of chicken stock. I made this at home, but you can always buy it at the store. Now for my lentil soup recipe. Start by cleaning the onion and chopping it. Put the chopped onion in a large pot. The sweet potatoes add incredible flavor to the soup. The skin is a little grubby, so I'm going to remove it. Then go ahead and cut it into bite-sized cubes. Add the sweet potato to your pot and peel and chop a couple of carrots. I ran out of carrots, so I'm just using one, but I normally use at least a couple. The carrots add extra flavor. Add your carrots to the pot and get at least five to six cloves of garlic. If you've watched my videos before, you'll know that I like to press on my garlic like this. It pops open and makes it so much easier to peel. Chop the garlic pretty fine and add to your pot of veggies. Add a couple tablespoons of oil and you are ready to get cooking. Over medium heat, add a bit of salt and pepper, stir and cover. Cook like this for a few minutes and just until the veggies start to brown. Add one quart of chicken stock and stir, scraping up any delicious veggies stuck to the bottom of the pan. Rinse your lentils really well and then add them to the pot. Add at least two cups of water and more, depending on how brothy you want your soup. Salt and pepper to taste. Add at least one tablespoon of cumin. I put an extra because I love cumin. You can also add chili flakes if you like a bit of heat. I like to add two teaspoons of turmeric powder. Stir it up, cover, and cook over low heat until the lentils become tender. I almost forgot a very important step. Add a dash of cinnamon, just a teeny bit. It goes so well with the sweet potato, but you don't want to overwhelm it. This made more than two quarts of soup, enough for me to have about a 12 ounce portion of soup every day. If available, serve with cheese or a dollop of sour cream. Mmm. Mmm. Wow, it's so good. The sweet potato and that little dash of cinnamon, I don't even know how to describe it. It's delicious. There is, however, one thing I can think to add. Start with one cup of milk. Add two teaspoons of white vinegar and set aside. I buy baking supplies when I need them and when they're on sale. That's how I ended up with this corn flour. I've had this sitting in my pantry for a while and it's time to use it. We'll start with the dry ingredients. One cup of corn flour, one cup of white flour, one tablespoon of baking soda, a half teaspoon of salt, a quarter cup of brown sugar, stir until blended. You know what, before I add in my wet ingredients, I'm going to grease my pan. I have a very fancy technique. I just use globs of oil and my bare hands. 
It works. Sorry, I forgot to hit record. I just cracked one egg into the buttermilk. Now whisk it up and pour it into the dry ingredients. Add the melted butter and gently fold the wet and dry ingredients together. Be careful not to over mix. This will keep the corn cakes light and fluffy. What do you think folks? Is this slightly over mixed? I think I overmixed it a little bit. Spoon the mixture into muffin tins, filling them about two thirds of the way full. I always end up with an odd number of muffins like this. Use any extra batter to make the muffin cups more even. Because I'm not using the last muffin cup, I wipe out the grease and fill it with water so it won't burn in the oven. Clean off any messy spots and bake at 425 for about 15 minutes or until lightly golden. While those are baking, please subscribe to my channel. I've got lots of recipes and adventures to share with you, and while I edit videos as quickly as I can, I know I will work faster with more social pressure. I'm Christy, and what the f The corn cakes are ready, and we can tell because they have this nice bounce to them. They have a beautiful golden color, a light bouncy texture, and are best served with butter. Ah, perfect. That's exactly what I was looking for. This is gonna be perfect if I just dunk it in my soup a little bit. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah, this is gonna be a good lunch. Not including the corn cakes or any toppings that I put on top of the soup, it really costs just about 55 cents to make a lovely bowl of lentil soup. It's so good and satisfying, and it'll keep you regular. I'm craving fresh veggies for dinner, and I'll use baby spinach for the base of my salad. Carrots are cheap, and I already bought some for my lentil soup. Cabbage will add extra texture to the salad, and it keeps really well in the fridge. I like to use lemons for salad dressing. I was hoping to get a cheese like goat cheese or feta cheese, but I'm having trouble finding anything good that costs $2. This looks promising. This fresh mozzarella has just expired, but as long as the package isn't damaged, it should be good for another couple weeks. I'm going to test it out for you. $1.99 for this cheese. We'll have spinach salad with a Mediterranean flair. To make life easy, I prepare my salad greens in advance, starting with a bunch of spinach. I have some cabbage left over from last week. Whenever it has brown spots like this, I just shave it off. And then cut thin slices of cabbage. Add it to the bowl. Now we'll prepare the carrots by peeling and grating them. And toss everything around. You can cover and store this in your fridge for a little over a week. When you're ready to enjoy your salad, Add whatever toppings you have available. 
These are some garbanzo beans I made. Seeds and nuts are good too, but I'm not going to use these today. I love olives and I happen to have this big jar. And top with a few mozzarella balls. By the way, this cheese was delicious and fresh and lasted all week. Now we're ready for dressing. I use olive oil, lemon juice, and a dash of salt and pepper. Ooh la la. Mm -hmm. It's refreshing, it's simple, and it costs just about 86 cents per bowl. I like my simple salad. <laughs> For breakfast, we're getting old-fashioned oats. A quart of milk, make sure to check that expiration date. A bag of bananas costs $1.99. It's really more than I need, but I can use leftovers to make muffins. There are a variety of nut butters to choose from. I usually buy one of the natural options and just make it last. But when all else fails, there's always Jif. Peanut butter banana oatmeal. In a saucepan, add three quarters of a cup of water, one quarter cup of milk, a dash of salt, and a teaspoon of brown sugar. Put it on low heat and give it a stir. Once it starts to simmer, add half a cup of oats, stir, and let cook for five minutes on low heat. I like to serve with a pat of butter, a big blob of peanut butter, slices of banana, and a little sprinkle of brown sugar. Ah, mm-hmm. Mm. Oatmeal, peanut butter, banana. It's a classic, it's cheap, and it costs just about $1 per serving. Please remember, I made this meal plan thinking about myself as an individual. So if you have a family or you have a partner, whoever you live with, if you're feeding more than one person, you'll need to adjust these recipes. I hope this video has inspired you to eat healthy and save money. Thanks for watching and happy cooking.